is what is surgical weight loss treatment and how does it differ from medical weight loss tre treatment? So what is the, I guess, what are the different medical and surgical weight loss treatments? Yeah, so I suppose weight loss, weight loss treatments can be anything from what I've already mentioned, something like slimming well to weight loss, uh, weight watchers, to then having a bit more focus with nutritionists, dietitians, etc. And then true medical weight loss will now include some of the medications that are out there. So for some patients, you, there are some medications that help you lose, um, uh, help you lose weight and, and retain it off there, along with a very low calorie diet and dietitian input. So the I suppose if I said the, the sort of evidence for that, is that a good thing? Well, we got there's been a good study recently showed about uh, some of the newer medications. About two years, you can have some good weight loss, but we don't know what happens after then. So the benefit is you're on a, you're on a medication. Uh, there are side effects from that medication. So again, in that in the research studies, about half of patients get some form of gastrointestinal upset, whether that's bloating or you know changing bowel motions, those sorts of things, and whether or not people can stay on them. So surgical weight loss is when you add in a procedure to sustain the weight loss. And really, that's where if you're saying what can give me sustained weight loss for a decade or longer, what evidence is there that I know will work? Well, the only thing out there is surgery at the moment. So mm. surgical weight loss, are things the patients would have heard things like gastric bands. They might have heard of a thing called a gastric bypass. The commonest procedure now we probably do is a thing called a sleeve gastrectomy. But these are all keyhole operations to change the way we, um, we react to food and how we feel hungry in between meals. That's the main way they work. Um, and then you've got, I alluded to earlier a bit, the things like endoscopic procedures. So those are procedures where we don't do any cuts on the tummy, but we use a camera to go inside of the stomach. So the commonest one is a thing called a gastric balloon. So they're, the, they're very different. Med surgical involves an intervention, but has much better, much more weight loss, better outcomes and other other medical problems and we know they work for longer uh, and that's the main difference between the two mm. and would you you said it's interesting because the kind of assurance you give in times of longevity are quite similar to the kind of assurances i give which is you think you know surgical outcomes are um on quite long term a very long term I, I use a similar analogy to surgical rejuvenation and the medical stuff yeah, the medical stuff you would sort of continue uh, consider a maintenance thing, really. Um, it's interesting. Is you said ten years or so? It was so longer. So, so we've got you know these operations aren't new, um, and so for the gastric bypass, there's there's um, uh, the, the, the Swedish surgeon started a registry twenty five years ago, and we're still showing when you look at the amount of weight overweight someone is, and we call that their excess weight. Um, you would lose about three quarters of that after a, a, after a gastric bypass over the first two years. It, in you know, a significant majority, if you flash forward two decades, um, at, at, you're looking at the majority of patients still having kept off about half of that excess weight. Mm. So this is a huge, a long way down the line. And the sleeve is a newer procedure, but we've got similar data going 12, 15 years now. So the medication, we're looking at data for a couple of years. And then, and then, I would say the, the sort of lifestyle intervention things where you've either got dietitians, nutritionists, with or without our involvement, um, that's going to give you a few years of weight loss. But it's a bit like your rejuvenation. This is something to do to get good weight loss, you know, um, you know quickly and with help. But it's the data will show it's not a lot. We, we can't say in 10 years it's going to stay off. It may for some people, but for a number of people, it won't, won't keep it off. And I think... I think more and more now we look at weight loss as a whole sort of, you know, that journey we, we said about the operation and then your part. Actually, with, with, with someone, particularly someone who's young, we want to maybe do some other things first if their BMI is sort of 27 to 35 to try and stop it creeping up above that. Yeah. And that could be medical therapy, could be endoscopic therapies. Um, or if it's, re if it's really resistant, it's not coming down, we might do an operation earlier. So there's all sorts of things. And then when you mm. have surgery later on, you might use other things to help, you know, get people back on track. So there's a whole range of stuff to use, but it's the longevity is only there with surgery. Yeah. It's it, something you've said to sort of spark me off. Um, you, there may not be an answer to this, but do you know, is there any uh, research that's looked into the age at which you experience weight gain versus long-term outcomes. So I'm thinking, is it worse to be an, an overweight child 
versus an overweight young adult in terms of your long-term health? Um, well, uh, so there is some data on it. Um, I mean, I just certainly that on you. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's unfair. <laughs> sorry. Um, I feel like I'm on my viver again. Um, shall, I, shall I tell you why? No, I'm that's asking? fine. So, um, so lo the longer you are overweight, the harder it is to lose that weight, and the more likely you're to have complications. And I think more and more we realise now that if you're an overweight child, there is evidence to show that you're more likely to get some of the other problems associated with being overweight. So things like diabetes, heart disease, more so than if you gain weight. So uh, later in life and um, um, say in your 40s or 50s, you're, you, you can still get problems. But if you've had a long term period of being overweight, you are going to get worse problems. Than that. And it tends to be harder to shift because um, that's just been normal for you. And I so the final thing is, what's the cause of you being overweight as a child? And that's a really complex thing to, to but we have got genes, we understand there's now genes involved with things. So, so again, it's, it's a, it, it's, it, it would, it, it can be sometimes harder to treat. And then also um, you probably want to act sooner rather than later if you've had, you know, if the time's been longer. Mm, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I was quoting to a patient earlier today um how because he was, he was sort of saying after liposuction will i be able to get this fat back and i said you will you can but we are able to be fat in different ways you can have um more fat cells more adipocytes or they can enlarge or both and yeah. but what's interesting is that in adulthood we don't make new adipocytes we have the same number of adipocytes that we had when we were a child so yeah i wonder if that affects the extent or the distribution in which we experience weight gain afterwards. Oh, well, that's a that's a hard one. I, it's yes, I, I'm not sure on that. I mean, we just we. I think it's quite hard to tease out. Yeah, we'll we'll okay. think about that one over a drink. And by uh, yeah, the third I think one, so. we'll have the answer. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>